Hello and welcome. This is Pre-Uni New College. This video is intended to provide information about thinking skills and how to solve these questions through strategical steps. These logical explanations and solutions will be beneficial. However, please be advised it does not give all the answers and is not a shortcut to solve thinking skills questions. Most importantly, consistent study and reading are essential for successful results. Let's begin the video. Welcome everyone to part 2 of 3 of Critical Thinking Strategy for Thinking Skills. In this video, we will be covering drawing conclusions. As mentioned in our previous video, part 2 of 1, there are 6 types of critical thinking questions. They are assessing the impact of additional evidence, detect reasoning errors, drawing a conclusion, identifying assumptions, matching arguments, and etc. We will be covering drawing conclusions in this video. Let's look at what drawing conclusion questions are. These are questions that ask you to deduce from the given information a final conclusion or an overall statement. Drawing conclusions can also refer to information that is implied or inferred as this information is never clearly stated. To better understand this, let's break down each word of the question. Drawing means to extract, withdraw or take out. And conclusion refers to the findings or a judgment reached by reasoning. Therefore, after breaking down each word, we come to understand that essentially we are finding clues in the information to further make meaning of the text. Drawing a conclusion questions present a number of premises, then require students to determine the best conclusion that can be made from these premises. If we have a look at this example, James says, I go to pre-uni every Wednesday. And Phil replies, today is Wednesday. The conclusion that can be deduced from this set of premises is James will go to pre-uni new college today. Let's look at how we would apply the tips to questions that ask us to draw a conclusion. The first step is to read the question and identify the question line, which will typically ask for a conclusion. The second step is to read the argument and identify the premises. The third step is to paraphrase the argument using your own words. However, do this step only if necessary. The fourth step is to predict that answer by looking for the answer option that uses information in the argument to make some form of conclusion. And the last step is to eliminate wrong answers, which can be done by eliminating all options that are logically inconsistent with the premises. Answer options that are out of scope should also be eliminated. Let's look at an example question from the Selective Schools Thinking Skills Test. It says, Muhammad's school wanted to find out how different sports affected people's fitness levels. They made all the best sports people take a fitness test. This is what they found. The fittest runners were fitter than the fittest swimmers. All the gymnasts were fitter than most of the runners. All the swimmers were fitter than all the gymnasts. Which one of these sentences can be concluded from the above information? A. The swimmer's average fitness level was better than those of the other groups. B. The range of fitness levels was the greatest amongst the runners. 
C. Runners and swimmers will generally be fitter than gymnasts. And D. There was less of a range of fitness levels amongst the gymnasts than amongst the swimmers. This question falls in the drawing a conclusion question category as the question clearly asks us to determine which of the options can be concluded from the information above, which asks students to deduce from the given information a final conclusion or an overall statement. The question also uses the same question line as mentioned earlier in the tips section of the video. We can also see from this question that a number of premises or statements have been presented which then require students to determine the best conclusion. Then let's apply the general approach method to solve this question. The first step is to read the question and determine what it is asking. Since it is asking us which of the sentences can be concluded from the above information, we are looking for an answer option that correctly states the conclusion. The next step is to read the argument and identify the premises. The first premise is the fittest runners were fitter than the fittest swimmers. The second premise is all the gymnasts were fitter than most of the runners. And the third premise is all the swimmers were fitter than all the gymnasts. Step three is to paraphrase the argument if you need to understand the argument better. However, Remember to stick as close as possible to the actual text. In this case, we can summarize the argument to make it easier to understand by writing a number sentence. If we have a look down below, the information has been organized visually to better understand the logic of the question. The fourth step is to predict the answer. Since we are looking for a conclusion, look for a statement that uses the information in the argument to make some form of conclusion. In this case, look for a statement that compares fitness levels of different sports to come to a conclusion. The final step is to eliminate wrong answers. Since we are looking for a conclusion, we are only going to eliminate options that are out of scope or options that contain information that is inconsistent with the information in the text. Let's look at option A first. The swimmers averaged fitness levels was better than those of other groups. Since all gymnasts were fitter than most runners and all runners were fitter than all gymnasts, we can deduce that all swimmers were fitter than most runners. However, some runners were fitter than all swimmers. We therefore cannot conclude that the swimmers average fitness level was higher than the runners average fitness level. So option A is incorrect. Now let's look at option B. The range of fitness levels was the greatest amongst the runners. From the summary, we can see that the fittest runners are the fittest people out of everyone and that most runners are less fit than all swimmers and all gymnasts. This indicates that the range of fitness levels was the greatest amongst runners so option B is correct. Before we move on, let's quickly go through why options C and D are incorrect. Option C, runners and swimmers will generally be fitter than gymnasts, is incorrect as most runners are not as fit as gymnasts. Option D, there was less of a range of fitness levels amongst the gymnasts than amongst the swimmers, is incorrect since runners have a greater range of fitness levels as we deduced in option B. Therefore, 
we know that option B is correct. Let's look at an example question from the Opportunity Class Sample Thinking Skills Test. The question states, Jess, Camilla, Lucy and Max are seated around a table on a train. Two of them are facing forwards in the direction of travel and two are facing backwards. Two have window seats and the other two have aisle seats. I know that Jess is sitting diagonally opposite Lucy. Max is facing forwards and Camilla is next to Jess. Which one of the following do I also know? A. Lucy is travelling backwards. B. Lucy has a window seat. C. Camilla has an aisle seat. And D. Jess is sitting opposite Max. Like the sample question before, this question example falls into the drawing a conclusion question category because it directly asks us to determine which of the options do I also know. We must conclude a true statement from this information. We can also see from this question that a number of premises or statements have been presented which then require students to determine the best conclusion. Then let's apply the general approach to solve this question. The first step is to read the question and determine what it is asking. Since it is asking us which one of the following do I also know, we are looking for an answer option that correctly states the conclusion in the answer options that we know for certain is true. The next step is to read the argument and identify the premises. The first premise is Jess is sitting diagonally opposite Lucy. The second premise is Max is facing forwards. The third premise is Camilla is next to Jess. The third step is to paraphrase. Paraphrase the argument if you need to understand the argument better. However, remember to stick as close as possible to the actual text. In this case, we can summarize the argument by drawing a diagram from the given information. We will define the forwards direction by the arrow going upwards. Jess will be in the top left corner, Camilla will be in the top right corner, Max will be in the bottom left corner, and Lucy will be in the bottom right corner. The fourth step is to predict the answer. Since we are looking for a conclusion, look for a statement that correctly states the location of the mentioned person. The final step is to eliminate wrong answers. Since we are looking for a conclusion, we are only going to eliminate options that are out of scope or options that contain information that is inconsistent with the information in the text. Let's look at option A first. Lucy is traveling backwards. We know that Max is facing forwards. From the diagram, we know that Lucy is next to Max, so Lucy should also be facing forwards. Option A is incorrect. Now let's look at option B. Lucy has a window seat. The information given to us does not define which side of the window or aisle seats are Therefore, we do not know for certain if this statement is correct or incorrect. So, we can also eliminate this option. Option C has a similar argument to option B. Since we are not given the position of the window or the aisle seats, we cannot make a concrete conclusion of where Camilla will be. So, we can eliminate this option. From the diagram, we have deduced from the information that option D is the correct statement, which is Jess is sitting opposite Max. 
Since Jess has to be sitting next to Camilla, she cannot be next to Max. Thank you for watching this video and hopefully it has helped you understand a bit about thinking skills and the strategies on how to solve these questions. Please note, as stated in the start of the video, studying and reading consistently are essential for successful outcomes.